Hello everybody and welcome to this new video from Bicotic. Today we're looking at a new release from Giant. It's the Giant Revolt gravel bike for 2022. Coming up in this video we will compare the new Revolt to the outgoing Revolt and we'll compare it to some other bikes to see how it all stacks up. Right, so here we go, the Giant Revolt for 2022. This here is a beauty shot of the new Revolt Advance Pro Zero, pictured here on this rather lovely gravel road. So the geometry's had some tweaks that we'll have a look at in a second. You've got six water bottle mounts, so you can stick things all over it. A neat feature is that you can actually use a dropper post on it. And if you're a diehard Bicotic fan, you'll remember when I reviewed the Giant TCX, I showed this feature and it looks a little bit different on the Revolt, but basically if you have this little adapter in, you can have the D-shaped defuse seat post but if you take that out you have a much more conventional 30.9 millimeter round seat tube to put a dropper into another pretty cool feature is the flip chip on the back where you can actually change the wheelbase of the bike from a short position to a long position and if you have it in the long position you can get some well chunky 53 millimeter tires on it pretty cool oh and it's lighter than it was before as well so if you watch one of my previous videos i introduced something i'm calling the hummingbird albatross spectrum and it's just a way to try and take the geometry data that we get from the manufacturers and then plot the bike on a spectrum between flighty responsive hummingbird and stable unruffled albatross and with that in mind i've put all the data into a spreadsheet and basically all that it does is it ranges each one of these measurements averages them together and comes up with a score for each bike as you can see here i've put in quite a few giants to see how they all stack up and basically i am just over 510 32 inch inside leg and these are the frame sizes that the manufacturers suggested for each of these bikes it's quite interesting to note the differences in the virtual top tube lengths and as is the fashion at the moment the new revolt has a longer top tube than the old one the wheelbase falls either side of the old one because you can have a long and a short version slightly longer reach slightly taller stack same chain stays in the short version obviously longer in the longer version slightly steeper head angle and the bottom bracket has been dropped quite a lot actually so if we pop those in order create a little graph this is what it comes up with and again as i said last time you've got to take this slightly with a pinch of salt but what it allows us to do is organize the bikes into some kind of order and clearly the merida reacto and the giant tcr are more flighty responsive nippy than the specialized diverge and according to this formula the giant revolt as you probably would have imagined falls towards this end of the spectrum as well the one questionable thing is giant are saying the new revolt is more responsive than the old one except according to this formula these are slightly further to the right and if we just look at the data it's a very close run thing to be honest clearly riding these bikes would be the best way to judge this but we can't do that so there we go so i've taken this and this is the order that we're going to look at these bikes in the stack and compare them which actually means that the specialized diverge is the first bike up just notice that that said 23 before i've changed that to 22 stupid thing so yeah we don't have a picture of the revolt in the long flip chip version so the next one up is the giant revolt in the short version and if we fade from the diverge to the new revolt it looks something like this fading between the two so you can see the diverge is a pretty long bike they've both actually got the same bottom bracket drop and in this version here where we've got the short flip chip position they've both got the same chainstay length very different gearing options on these here got the one by on the diverge with the massive cassette on the back and the two by grx on the revolt pro zero so the next bike to pop up in the geometry formula was actually the old version of the revolt which is quite handy because we can now compare between the two that's fading back and forth and though not a massive change we definitely do have some changes it's all a lot tidier at the front we've certainly got a shorter stem sitting slightly further back so i guess the shorter stem keeps the reach about right seat stays seem a little bit lower and clearly the bottom bracket is a good bit lower so I do have some pictures of a couple of other versions of the Revolt. This is the Advance Pro Zero, 5,000 pounds. But I also have here the Advance One, which looks like this. 
It's got a one by rival group set against the two by GRX. Pro version has the CXR1 carbon wheels, whereas the advanced one has the PX2 wheel set. Much fatter tyres on the advanced one. Quite like that green colour, but also of note, the advanced one comes with a dropper seat post, which I think is pretty cool. And we're looking at three gram for this bike. Then the other one I have a picture of is the advanced two. This is fading between the advanced one and the advanced two. Coming in this sparkly blue colour, lovely jubbly. And that's got the two by Shimano GRX RX 600 group set on it with an FSA crank set, as opposed to the rival ETAP on the advanced one. And again, no dropper post on this one. Okay, so if we head back over to the geometry formula chart, we can see the next bike in the list is gonna be the Trek checkpoint. And fading from the revolt to the checkpoint looks something like that. Super long bike is the checkpoint, even though the suggested frame is the 56. The 56 has a virtual top tube of 584 mil in comparison to the short flip chip version of the revolt 560 We've also got the interesting asymmetric chain stays on the checkpoint that's the revolt there and the checkpoint has got the iso speed decoupler there the revolt presumably is relying on its defuse seat post okay mid pack canyon grizzle and if we fade through to the grizzle how does that look? Well, it looks a bit like that. Got the split carbon seat post on the grizzle. And even though the Canyon website suggests a size small for me, it's got a pretty long reach on it, the grizzle, and a pretty low stack height as well. Okay, then next along we've got the Specialized Crux, which we did a video on the other day. Pretty new release for next year. And if we fade through to the Crux, that looks something like that. Hard not to think about the Athos when we fade through to the Crux. Very Athos-y looking. I have to say for me, I like the look of the Crux. It looks very clean, but we don't have any of the extra bottle mounts on it. So it's probably more of a race machine, you could say. Okay, next along, Giant TCX. And this is going to be an interesting one to look at because obviously this is the Cyclocross offering from Giant. This is fading between the two. Pretty big difference up here in regards to the stem look at that little squidgy one there for the revolt and a more stretched out one for the tcx but clearly the revolt is sort of longer and more stretched out and has much lower bottom bracket look at that major difference the tcx has much higher seat stays quite a big difference there but if you do flip that chip round, then the Revolt will have a slightly longer chain stay. So it's pretty cool, that flip chippy thing. It'd be very interesting to give that a go. Okay, so next, the Giant Defy. This is the one I've been interested to look at. I think it would be quite a valid question that people would be asking, should I get the Giant Revolt? Or would I be better off with a more sort of endurance bike like the Defy? So here we go, fade through to the Defy. And just fading back and forth, we can clearly see Though from the same stable, they are very different. The Revolt is obviously longer and slightly higher up at the front. But without seeing them back to back like this, it's quite easy to think that they're more similar than in fact they are. So it's quite handy to see them lined up like that. I like the Defy and I think this paint job's rather snazzy, isn't it? I rather like it. Next in the stack is the canyon in flight and a quick fade between the two here like that this is canyon's full-blown cyclocross bike and we can see from that that the in flight is going to be more racy and then last but not least let's go full hummingbird and here's the giant tcr and if we fade between these two you can see full-blown road race bike gravel bike and that's a really good example of the different style of bike. And I couldn't resist putting these two bikes on a downhill slope on some super gnarly grav and doing a fade between them. 
and you can see how the gravel bike is going to inspire a lot more confidence as you go down this super gravelly hill. It's pushing the front wheel out in front of you. It's lifting you up at the front. Longer wheelbase is going to be more stable. What is interesting is I've lined them up at the base of the tyre and that does effectively eliminate the difference in bottom bracket drop. Pretty much which until I'd done this I hadn't really thought of that. So there we go, that's quite a cool way of looking at the two side by side. In this instance I'd rather be on the Revolt, that's for sure. Now just before I finish this video something I wanted to touch on very quickly is that you probably noticed throughout the video that we have quite a varied selection of gear options on the different bikes and the different versions of the Revolt and it's definitely worthwhile getting your head round the gearing before you go and buy one of these bikes just to make sure that you get exactly what it is you need. And in this graph here, it's giving you an idea of what you get with these different group sets at each end of the range. So in blue, you've got the hardest gear and in red, you've got the easiest gear. So clearly looking at this, the easiest geared bike here is actually a control that I've put in, which is my mountain bike, which is a Vitus Mythique VRS 29er. It's a one by and it's got a massive 51 cassette on the back and a tiny little 30 on the front. So you can get this into a super easy gear to get up steep technical climbs. The bike here with the least easy, easy gear is the TCR, the full blown race bike, but this does have the hardest hard gear as you would expect this bike is not expected to go off-road at all. So if I was going to be tempted to buy a gravel bike, which I'll be honest I'm not right now because I have my mountain bike and I have my road bike, personally I'd be drawn to the Advance 1 with its 1x drivetrain. I definitely prefer the idea of 1x on a gravel bike and looking at the range of this bike I'd say that was pretty good. As you can see down here on the graph, this is it here and that stacks up pretty well. It's not got quite the same easy gear as the Advance Pro Zero but that is a 2x and the hardest gear is not a million miles off. So I'd say that was a pretty good all-round package there for the uh, the one by gearing. And not only that, that comes with the dropper post, which I think is pretty cool. And not even crazy money coming in at 2,999. So for me, like I say, if I was going to get one of these, I think this would be a pretty cool bike. So there we go. Giant, if you're listening, send me one over. I'd like to have a go on it. Thanks very much. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.